Well, you know, you know, uh, welcome to a prophetic service. A prophetic service is on prophetic time. I mean, dear God, folks, Cracker Barrel will be there. I mean, really, honestly. I mean, it'll be there. Go, go and don't, don't sleep any more than I do. Cracker Barrel will be there. You can always eat. But you can't always be in a, in a move like this. You need to get used to different. The Lord, the Lord had spoke to me about something and I'll go ahead and read this to you. I don't know what Kat has in mind, but she's, it'll be awesome, whatever it may be. The voices of freedom have become fewer than they were just two years ago. For whatever reason, we see them diminished. Listening to the founding fathers as they pledge to each other their lives, their fortunes, and their sacred honor. Whenever resemblance of a dictator has stood and declared all peoples who do not agree with him or his party are enemies of the Constitution, while the truth, every decision made by him and his party, is the very thing the U.S. Constitution was written to protect us from. Are we afraid? Are we concerned that personal comfort will be at risk if we stand for what is right? What is their strength? Why is an obvious total corrupt jackal and an even more corrupt political party. Why are they so emboldened and without fear? Do everything short of burning the U.S. Constitution in front of the world. Their strength is the totally demoralized generation of people who control news outlets and civil governments. The college force of today for the most part, don't know nor do they care what the Declaration of Independence says nor the Constitution that protects it. They have come close to pulling off the greatest takeover of power that the world has ever seen. One world government they so proudly tout is coming on three things with the strength of three. A demoralized people, a non-willingness to resist, and a treacherous Republican Party. There were three that stood against all of this. One was Donald Trump, one was Netanyahu, and one was Vladimir Putin. One has been dealt with, two are being dealt with. There's no fear of any more of your votes. They simply don't count them. You have an illusion of freedom. There's no real, real freedom under this current setup of politics. You must drag them out into the open now. You, the people of God, must do the things that will take the power from their hands. You must become proactive. How? Well, a lot of ways. One, how about this time before you vote, write out an affidavit of who you vote. Real quiet. I didn't know whether to read this before or after, but Kat wasn't here, so I said, well, I'm going to read it. She can correct me if she did. <laughs> no. no, she won't. She listen to this. <laughs> she laughed too. Before you just do this, before you just... It better match the results of your hidden envelope. The Lord told me not long ago that hope springs forth from conquered impossibilities. I'll say that again. Hope springs forth from conquered impossibilities. Once we win this one, 
I didn't say if. You did notice that, right? I said once we win this one. The generation after us will believe they can accomplish anything. And they will, we will win this one. Hallelujah. And produce the victorious church. Yes, we will. Think about it. So, in light of all of that, we are right now the hope that's springing forth to your children, your grandchildren. Because we are conquering the greatest impossibility that we have ever seen. And yet a conquered impossibility produces a magnitude of hope to the next generation. And we're about to show them through the word of God, the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, everything that we hold dear in righteousness before heaven. We are about to show the next generation, by God, we win this. Hallelujah! <laughs> you act like you believe that. Well, I'm going to tell you something. You do believe that. And a bunch of corrupt jackals better take note that there is a living church on the earth right now that's carrying the power of the living God and we absolutely win. It is our father's bat and our father's ball and we play till we win. We don't play till it's over. We play till we win. Hallelujah. And then we take our bat and ball and go home. Hallelujah. Are you excited today? Cat, you excited today? I believe that. Well... I want you to thank the Lord in heaven today that he sent a prophet, a prophet of great voice that heaven honors and heaven knows. And he sent her by this way to tell us what the Lord, you know, prophets don't just come and tell the future. They also bring a word from heaven to tell you what to say so that you can begin to declare what heaven is declaring. Hallelujah. So thank the Lord this morning for Miss Kat Kerr. Would you do that? speak. The power is holy. The word is holy. The blood is holy. Are you holy? Are you ready for the greatest days of your life? To show who and what you believe in? Who you are? My son has made you free. My heart is with you. My hand is with you. My power is in you. For you will walk and talk 
just like me. You should desire to be just like me, live like me, operate like me. You are made in our image. An image that cannot be changed. It cannot be won against. It cannot be stopped. For those will be like dust who has spoken against me, my son, Holy Spirit, these days, my anointed, my appointed. They will regret for all of eternity what they have chosen this day. For their words will be dust. Their power will be dust. Their money will be dust. Their property will be dust. Their position will be dust. And their memory of greatness they so desire shall be like dust under your feet. We have already won. But we're going to show them without question. We have won. This country is free. You are free. This world is free. They didn't make it. They didn't plan it. And they don't get to run it. This day I send my fire that comes from my throne to sweep across this world to expose every hidden person, every hidden lie, every hidden plan, every hidden corruption, the money they have stolen. They will not be successful. Theirs will not be what remains on this earth, for they will not even be remembered. But the blood of my son will scream out all over this world. Those who have shed it for me, my son, Holy Spirit, the living God, the Godhead, the throne of God, the world of God. We all cry out, for justice is coming in great measure. They can't hide from it. They can't stop it. They won't be able to stand it. And many will take themselves to hell rather than face the judgment. That is their choice. I will not stop it. Some have beyond gone beyond the stage of mercy, crossed over the line of mercy, so they shall have no mercy. For the bowls are full of prayers, of worship, asking for justice, liberty, freedom, hope this day. I release from myself to flood every home in this world. The presence will flood them. Hell is trembling even now. The gates of hell will not prevail. The plans of hell, the words of hell, the lies of hell, the deception of hell, the corruption of hell. The defilement of hell has been wasted. For nothing is stronger than the blood. Nothing is stronger than the word. Nothing is stronger than a believer who knows who they are and is not afraid to say it. For what you are about to see is the body, the remnant stand up and speak into the atmosphere my plans, my will, my way. For I say, victory is already here. 
Satan has lost and lost and lost and failed and failed and failed. This will be the biggest failure he's ever had. The world will know it. The wicked will know it. The just will know it. This is a season of knowing and understanding, receiving revelation and living it. For you were called to live heaven culture on this earth. To operate in spirit force as the army of the living God. No fear, no lack. Powerful weapons. That man does not understand. Even Satan does not understand them. The one thing he can't copycat is joy, is celebration, creation of what brings life. He is not in charge. And he's picked weak, sick, defiled people to follow him. That foundation has already crumbled in the spirit. They won't have nothing to stand on. No place to run to. No place they can hide from my justice. For I have already spoken from the courtroom of heaven. Even into the unknown space. Into the spirit realm, the physical realm. Those words have already been spoken. You can write it down. Who will wipe up this mess like a mop bucket so there's no trace of it. I'm about to speak to those who are around him who will have no voice to him. If they do not say what I say, they will no longer be there. And those in the Republican Party who are lying, they will lose their place. And I will put in that place powerful men and women of my picking. And justice will be given in the courtrooms on earth like it is in heaven. For hope has been sent. And I speak these words from a person of hope I chose. If you don't like her pink hair, get over it. For she has obeyed. She has been willing at all times. No matter what it was I asked of her, she has done it. She has said it. She has planned it. She has bought it. She's written down my words for what she will do for the next 150 years. There are those I have appointed to remain and live until I personally come to take them. No one can harm them. No one can stop their words, for they live wholly on purpose. Holy is powerful. It is redeeming. It is a joy, a celebration to live that way. Because you have nothing hidden. You have not spoken words that need to be struck down. But they're written down in heaven. I thank you this day for coming, for the hunger you have, the desire you have to live justly, to live perfectly, to love extravagantly. Love is the greatest weapon I ever made. Hell cannot defeat it. It will never be wiped out. But this day, is different. This day I send my life to each and every one of you. When hands are laid on you this day, you receive my life on the inside of you. The life of your father to flow through you to others who need help. You 
will live in a cloud of this life. And one day you walk into your home and see that cloud. It will go with you wherever you go. No sickness. No lack. No confusion. No pain. No deception. No attacks of the enemy will be able to come after you. But you will crush darkness and push it back. And people will know you belong to me. You came from me. I was your home. We'll be together forever. You will not need time. But you will live forever. Says your father. Father, I release into this ground. Your life in this building. Your life into all those who come here. Your life into the ones who work here, who serve here, who protect this place. For this day I am posting one million of the hosts of heaven to remain on these grounds and anything you expand to. For you are my chosen, Robin Bullock. To raise up warriors in Warrior Alabama. I will send you many young prophets who you will fill with my revelation and my power and my words. You will show them how to live, how to war, and their lives will never be the same. I will not let the wicked take those I have chosen to send you. I will even recover some of those whose lives have been corrupted by evil and I will still make sure they come to you. So get ready to build a, tra a place you can train them in. It'll be a powerful place where one day the very light of my countenance will shine from that place. And on the faces of all those you train there. For I have trusted you. And you have answered everything I have asked of you. You have given everything you had. And your family who stands with you. Will enjoy all the rewards you will get. Not just in heaven but on this earth. For you will have wealth without measure. Health eternal. Wisdom to live with, to train with. I will show you things that no one else knows. I will take you place that no one else goes. And I will tell you that you will know before any attack comes how to deal with it, crush it, and stop it. I thank you for hungering after my son. To desire to be just like him is a great thing. He admires you. He thanks you. He loves you for your heart, for your honesty, for your desire to bless him and to please him. Those are great things to accomplish in this earth. But this has become your life and your wife's life and your children's life. For they will follow after you. But you will remain a long time on this earth. Make no plans to die. For this day, I signed you. I make a sign to you, the mark of the host of heaven, 
to command 10 million of them. I send this army beyond what you already have. Some will war in the flesh like they did for Israel. They will not allow anyone or anything to take your life. Where you go, evil will flee. Hell will tremble. I will feed you from my own hand. Expect the manna to start to show up. In the most unexpected places, at the most unexpected times, when you see it, eat it. I will give you the pleasure of eating other things on this earth, but that will be the most important thing you eat. It will come from my hand. So this day, I tell you, you are a true warrior. And all warriors will be drawn to you. They will respect you. Some will fear you because I have placed that upon you. You will also dispense the terror of the living God. In places that need it, people who need to feel it, the wicked will tremble until they almost cannot breathe. They will fall on their face and repent to me. So this day, in front of witnesses, I let them know what I think about you. I am delighted by you. I am well pleased by you. But not only have you run after the things of God, you have loved your family well. One of the highest honors someone can come and they stand before my throne. They've come home to heaven. It's for me to turn to them and say, you have loved your family well. Don't forget that. This day, there are Boazes waiting to meet you. Who will supply many things you need. So pick out the property. Design the buildings. For you will have every one of them, says your God. Amen. 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 Father, I impart into this staff the love of God you just filled me with, your words you just spoke. I fill them into this staff, Father. They will help the nations. They will bring life to the nations. Money where it's needed. Wisdom where it's needed. I will speak to every nation's leader and say, they will give you favor without measure. For this day, I will no longer judge you by your obedience. I will judge you by your love, Robin Bullock, for it is extravagant. Woo! 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 Receive it, Robin. I impart my life into you, the life of the living God who knows everything, has been everywhere. I give you the friendship of my very son. That when you need him, he will come because of your willingness. And your hunger will be filled. Woohoo! Amen! 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 Woo! Woo! Father, I fill this tissue box full of your life.
You may be seated. Only for a few minutes. Because I will lay hands on every person here. For all those watching, are people watching? They are. Father, right now I am part to everyone watching. Whoever's watching, hold your hand out like this. Not you here, you get personal. <laughs> Which camera? This one. Father, I impart into everyone watching the life of God. Let it fill them, Father. Fill their homes, their businesses. Everywhere they go, let that cloud begin to appear. They will stand in it, and they will feel your life surrounding them, consuming them. I thank you, Father, for technology that you designed for your use. Because the wicked will not have control of it any longer. I thank you, Father, for your life. The few times I've imparted, it was like probably one of the most amazing experiences I have because that life flows out of me so much. It is a cloud, and when the next person comes in, they stand. They begin to stand in the cloud. It's very powerful. The cloud begins to fill the building. I know you've heard about the glory cloud, but I can tell you the life cloud is absolutely powerful. And in case you wondered, one day you'll come to the building and the glory cloud will be waiting for you. <laughs> one more comment from myself. No matter what you think about the worship done here, heaven always plays it when they play. It's okay to have your favorite form or type of music, but you better be ready for what heaven has. In heaven, you walk on music, you ride on music, you wear music in heaven. It's like a garment. Everywhere you walk on the streets of gold, you're hearing music everywhere. Nothing is normal in heaven. They have every color of hell, hell, not hell, <laughs> heaven. Hell hates the coloring of the hair. You know why they hate it? Because heaven does it all the time. This is heaven culture right here. That's why they have the welcome center people. The ones who ran the funeral homes run the welcome center. They used to get them when they were going to heaven. Now they get them when they're coming to heaven. That's a statement from Holy Spirit. Because people get up there and they are so shy. And what people are doing. They never expected it to be fun. I think that's the biggest shock of all. That's why he takes me all the time. That's why one of the first places I went to was a fun place. And they have fun places. But there's absolutely no defilement in it. They make movies in heaven. They capture them. You don't have to wait for it to be processed or edited. You don't have to wait for months and months to see something. Or whatever you watch up there... Will fill you with joy, excitement, adventure, intense experiences with God Himself. But don't forget the fun. 
It's the most fun place I've ever been to. Fun is everywhere. It's 50-50, actually. That's what the father said. 50% where you get undone. You don't think you can even breathe, even though you don't have to breathe to be there. You feel like you're going to melt into nothingness because of the presence, the glory, the awe. You'll never forget that awe. The first time you stand before the throne of God and his son has personally walked you up there because you've come home to live in the Father's house. Everything is alive. The plants, the creatures all talk. That means your pets too. Be nice to them, people. They will remember you. The ground is alive. The buildings have a voice. It speaks, it sings. Your own place, your mansion sings to you every time you come back to it from going all over heaven. You ride in the light of God on highways made of light. They carry you places. Even sometimes the very thing you choose to wear, yes, you do get a wardrobe room. It's bigger than any mansion you've ever had. Just the wardrobe room. There's only one size fits all. You put it on and it adjusts to your body. And that body will not have fat on it. It will not have age on it. It will have no deformities on it. No one is sick or handicapped in heaven. You never get tired. That's why your family members are celebrating that they're there. And no matter what they said to you, I would like for this to be done at my funeral. They could care less. Just show up and say, hi, I love you. Just everybody get together, look up and say, hi in heaven, we love you. Let's look up and wave right now. Hello, Father. Hello, Jesus. Holy Spirit. The host of heaven. Michael and his angels. The creatures, my pets, we love you. you. Woohoo! That should be the most normal thing you do. Wake up in the morning and say hello to them. Are you worshiping them? Say no. Are you saying hello? If they were there, would you say hello? Well, they're watching you. And they're eating cake. I have made cake very popular in heaven. Because the father told me that's what you say no matter what's going on. I don't care what it looks like or what they're saying or who's lying or what they're saying. You tell people the most important thing you do, of course, besides love him and listen, is to eat cake and celebrate. You know why? That is proof that you actually believe it's going to happen. And when you do things before they happen, because you know they will, your heart will be so filled with excitement. When it happens, you'll be the happiest person on this earth. Because you've already been celebrating that victory. So go home, eat cake. Maybe only a cookie sometimes. I gained a lot of weight eating that cake. <laughs> and one day I told God, please help me take it off. I've, I've had 30 pounds taken off of me. <laughs> yeah, well, claim it. Y'all do it right now. Say, I receive that. <laughs> I started saying it because whenever I visit the throne room and the father, the father speaks a lot. 
Or Jesus will speak. Anybody sits on the floor of the throne room, but you're not really sitting, you're floating in the air. And they get so excited. What's he going to say today? What's going to happen today? What are we going to know new? What does he make new? That should be in your heart. You should be saying those words. And they share and they share. And when they're done sharing, they bring the pizza and the ice cream in. And there are great, prestigious leaders who would say that would not ever happen. Well, guess what, buddy? You're going to get the pizza and ice cream whether you want it or not. That's not your choice. It's the Father's choice to bless you with having a picnic in the throne room. (laughs) Who wouldn't want pizza and ice cream? That was my food group. That was my only food group. I eat once a day. That was my food group. Dr. Pepper, chocolate ice cream, and pizza. Until the day I woke up and the father said, I have something new for you. Well, I was so excited. You will fast. Pizza. Chocolate ice cream and Dr. Pepper until you move into your new home. He told me that eight and a half years ago. We will be moving into our new home within the next month or so. Woohoo! I think when I travel for up to a year after that, I will bring pizza and ice cream to everybody in the meeting. Because I will be celebrating. (laughs) If you want things to change, you actually have to say it. Stop saying what's happening. Unless it's God. And I'm serious. Stop advertising for hell. Because most of the body is. You have to have a good report. Power in your tongue. Hope in your tongue. Joy in your tongue. People will actually want to listen to you. Add some colored hair. If you don't have hair, then have it painted on your head. I promise you, you will draw a crowd. Because they'll think, this has got to be the most fun person on this earth. I got to hear them. Because I happen to know most pastors don't want attention drawn. I understand from maybe 100 years ago that we're supposed to draw attention. We have to listen to this. Wake up, stand up, and stand out. (laughs) Say it. Wake up, stand up, and stand out. Woohoo! These are different days. If hell doesn't mind blasting lies everywhere, I'm telling you, on posters, on television, on the internet, in the fake newspapers, everywhere, they are spreading lies, as he was saying. Why is it wrong for us to advertise for heaven? Let them know. Make signs for your yard. For this time of year, do not celebrate Halloween. Because, yes, ma'am, I am going there. I'm going there. You are advertising hell. And when you go to these things people make that are haunted, guess what will go home with you? Hell has spirits waiting, evil ones, to follow you home because you willingly came into their place. Do not watch Halloween, wear Halloween, participate in Halloween. Do you know that's actually Reformation Day? How many people knew that? October 31st is Reformation, Reformation Day for lies for this world. Is celebrated 
recognized in heaven, why not celebrate that? Have a Reformation Day celebration. I will tell you what we are going to do at one class. We'll have the biggest festival, the Festival of Light, on October 31st. Every single year that people know about God, see his images all over the place, feel his presence, give out things that represent heaven at that festival. If that's where you're from and where you're going, you should be advertising them. But don't participate with hell. You should not tolerate hell. No toleration of hell. Shout it. No toleration of hell. Do we not fight against it continually? Do you not pray for people who have been consumed by it, hurt by it, attacked by it? Do they not want to kill, steal, and destroy? Why? In the name of Jesus Christ, do you celebrate their wicked day? It's about some time. It's about time someone said something. I do not celebrate it. I'm having a sign there. We do not participate with hell. We welcome heaven here. We're going to have doormats made <laughs> that will say, holy, holy, holy. But when you step on it, it will actually speak. It's too late. You're standing in the anointing. Even if you run, God will get you. If you're a believer, you need a doormat that does that. Make sure it fills your entire front door area. So when, uh, you know, Amazon or UPS come by, they'll be leaving with the anointing every time they come. Take communion and pour it on your property. I cleanse this entire place. I give this land to the Most High God. Anyone who touches, enters on, drives by this property will be filled with his presence. That's why we are a for-profit business. Because we plan to sell all this stuff. And what we sell will not bash people, but it sure will bash hell. He is your real enemy. So why do you dress like him? You can create a habitation for heaven or make a haunted house and create a habitation for hell. Who do you want in your home? And I can tell you, I go in the homes, and there are evil spirits standing right next to the television. They are not guests. They are residents. Because of what they watch on television. You're saying, come on in. It's like when you pursue God, you get in a position, you sit in here, you watch or listen, but you're looking for God. People do it all the time in their home, but it's for hell. You cannot watch extreme graphic profanity, violence, or sexuality. You will invite every one of those spirits, not just in your home, but go into your kids' bedrooms at night. So you pray for your precious children before you go to bed. Then you go out there and watch something because it's too graphic for them to see. Or well, they'll just be right in their bedroom. This is called truth, people. This is revelation. I've known this revelation for a long time. And I can be in any part of my home. Even if an advertisement comes on, I will yell, turn it off! And this time of year, you know what's being advertised. Horror is in hell. It's not supposed to be in your vocabulary. Profanity is actually hell's language. 
People only started speaking it because they heard it from hell. That's not divine. It doesn't bring hope or life or joy or help. And let me tell you, no matter what you think, you watch it long enough, it will come out of your mouth. Your soul has layers. And everything you watch, you listen to, you even say yourself, you feel those layers of your soul. As a man thinketh in his soul, so is he. That word heart in the Bible is not talking about this human beating heart. It's a position of something. Your heart of you is your soul. The very core of your entire spirit man is your soul. I desire above all things that you prosper and live in health even as your soul prospers. So if you're defiling it, is it going to prosper? You cannot be double-minded. I know the Bible says that. I may not have one here. Although I brought mine with me. It's in here. It fills my soul. From the time I was a little baby, my daddy started quoting scripture to me. I turned out to be one of his best friends. My earthly dad. He had 15 kids. You think I'm full of myself? I'm full of God. You think I need to be humble? People, you don't know my life. There was never any time for pride. There's no time for nothing except helping. I was number three. My older sister ran off and got married. My brother went into the military. Number two, oh, that's my wild brother, the wild hidden prophet. Out in the wilderness because he'd rather kill people than get them saved. They're wicked and evil, just get them off the earth. Wow. You should see his angel. It's like the size of a house. And he's right there with him. Stake him down. I do happen to know this. One day, my brother will call fire down from heaven and destroy wicked armies. So he's had to carry that all this time inside of him without being able to do it. Yeah, he does not uh, have a counseling ministry. If you're a Christian sinning, you don't want to call him. Well, let's see. I will shoot you. I will dang you over hell for about five minutes. You see, if you want to keep sinning or you want to repent, that is his counseling right there. And I came right after him. Thank you, God. So he is definitely the wild prophet out in the wilderness. God catches him up in the outer space just so he'd be quiet enough he can talk to him. He'll have a trance, which is a thing of God. And he'll get up out of the chair he's resting in and step into it. And he's there. Whatever's going on, he's there. But we're two different personalities. We have our own way. We deal with the wicked. (laughs) The same end result. They'll end up in heaven. Even if you die to go there with him. You choose. Satan forces you. Satan controls you. He'll get you in chains, chains and bondage. He'll get you addicted to things. He'll give you so get you so afraid you don't even want to go outside. And it's unfounded fear. There's no reason for the fear. Satan has so filled their soul with fear. As a man thinketh in his soul, so is he. So no matter what people think they're doing in secret, it will eventually come out. Don't swear in front of me. 
You won't like what happens. I don't participate with hell's language. And I don't care where I am when I hear someone swear either. They don't want to hang around. They're pumping gas. They stop pumping gas. You're going to swear your message to everybody? I'm going to come preach hellfire and brimstone to you and tell you what will happen if you don't repent. What if I lay hands on your fire? Your hair catches on fire. Then the gasoline pump explodes. Will you like what you're saying? Who's going to come and help you? I must not have got much grace that day. The greatest thing in heaven isn't just peace. It is the absence of evil. There is nothing evil or dark in heaven anywhere at all. It's life. Life, 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 life. Joy, 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 joy. Revelation, revelation. Creation, creation, creation. Adventure like you've never had before. Who would like to have adventure in heaven? Can I see anything? Because they have things you never dreamed of to have adventure. The most exciting place you'll ever be in, except for the new earth, which will be our home. The Father's actually willing. This is what he said to me. I'm actually willing to leave the home I've had and create a new earth where I'll put you all on it first. Then I'll come down on the holy city. And it will be our home together, not just my home. The Lord had to be willing to have his very appearance changed, his body changed. He had to be willing to walk and live on this earth. So he had to give up something. Holy Spirit had to be willing to change his base of operations to earth. Now he's still there because there's unlimited layers of himself. And they're everywhere. When you invite Holy Spirit in, he literally does this. He grabs the outside layer. And he, as a whole, is in you. You don't get a piece of him. You get a whole of him. And he will never stop speaking to you. So if you're not hearing him, listen closer. Because he never stops speaking to me. And sometimes it's tweaking. He will tweak you. So you have a whole of him, not a piece. I've had people go, well, if he keeps giving himself out, what's going to be left? He has unlimited layers, and that's the only way you can say it. The Father has unlimited layers. Christ has unlimited layers. And by the way, you have many layers. You have a certain amount of layers while you're on the earth in your soul. If you're Hispanic, you probably got 5,000. If you're Scottish, you got five. That would be my husband, Captain Bing, right there. It's like a rock. There's five things that are real important to him. He does not have long conversations with you unless it's about fishing. But me, I don't know how many I have, and I've never asked. It's a good thing God gave me somebody that didn't talk much. <laughs> That's why some people are more expressive. They have more layers. Your layers are your expressions. Is that right? It's your emotions, and your, it's so important. It's important to be expressive, but there's a, a scripture in the Bible that says one day some people will have none because they've given it all away. When you have a relationship with people, you make soul ties. That means a layer of their soul is in you, and a layer of you is in them. That's what that tie means. Don't picture a rope. I know people say it that way, but I know a lot about the soul, and I used to do uh, soul cleansing with people. I used to do all kinds of things like that. A great intercessor was for a long time. 
And I, and I didn't understand until the father came and spent four hours with me, earth time. That's a long time. Showing me what a human soul looked like. I saw a human soul. I immediately understood how, why we think things and how things happen, how things get repeated, how people get trapped in their soul like a criminal. They can't be free. And they get all kinds of stuff to rehabilitate them. They get out of prison. They have rehabilitation. They have classes in the prison. And pretty soon, they go right back out and find another crime to commit. Because your soul is your mind what you think on. Your will what you're choosing. Your emotions, you will do it. That is you, a living soul. That's what he called Adam. So they don't know why. Can they, they, they know it's a cycle, but they can't. Psychiatrists don't know what to do about it. Okay. Get them born again. Have them loose all that stuff from their soul like it never happened. And then they will not do it again. That is why you get stuck thinking on something and can't get it out of your head. And I understand grief. I understand you're sad when your family members leave and move to heaven. They're gone. You have a soul tie with them. You miss it. There's something missing. People say there's something missing. Yes, it's that person. They're up there. But you can lose that grief from your soul. And don't let it come back. It's okay to be sad and miss somebody. Do not let a spirit of grief attach itself to you. Because there are little spirits of grief. They don't come from heaven. You need to know which spirits come from there and which don't. If they move to heaven, be happy. Like the Bible says, you will be together forever. And they won't even know how long they've been gone. There's no time there. They'll just be preparing things for you, making lists to take you places, getting gifts for you, putting them in your mansion. And they'll know before you come, you're coming. Because they'll meet you at the gate. There's a place called portals in heaven. They're buildings. You go in there, they go walk up a steps, lean over a balcony, and they can see and hear you. They go every year on your birthday and sing happy birthday to you. When God tells them they're about to get born again, they make sure they don't miss that. They're going to get married. They make sure they don't miss that baby's being born. They don't miss, they don't miss any of it. So as soon as you thought, wow, I wish they were here. They were. They didn't miss it. My number one assignment is to reveal heaven to this earth. That's number one. Number two is teach you how to live like they live there. Number three is teach you who you are. And how to be dangerous against hell. How to keep your soul free so you will prosper and live in divine health. Tell you what's coming. Tell you how things happened in the past. Give you revelation on the word of God. I'm a revelator. I am a prophet. Don't call me a prophetess. When God passes out the mantle in the office, he doesn't say, well, you're a woman. You have to have a different title. As a matter of fact, I am going to go here too before I lay hands on you. In the spirit realm... And concerning spiritual things, there is no difference in power and authority in a woman than there is in a man. His daughters don't have less, people. And in case you ever wondered, he made woman because man needed help. A man actually has so many, I don't know what they call them actually, because I'm not a real scientific person. But you have brain little channels and things that run all over in your head. A woman has a thousand times more than a man does. A man just knows, I want something. I will go look and see if it's there. Let's see if it's there. Nope, it's not there. <laughs> the woman comes up in the cabinet. She loses one thing. Is that true? Yeah. We may be the weaker vessel. 
but we know what's going on all the time. And we can find anything that's lost. And we can make the best food you've ever had. We'll be the ones taking care of the babies. You get to play with them, ma'am. This is life on earth. It's different in heaven. You are not married. When you go to heaven, it's really going to be okay. You will not be heartbroken. It says into what? You're married into what? Death do you part. And I have had men say, I am living with my wife, whether God likes it or not. I went, I would love to see you stand before the living God and tell him that's your decision. <laughs> no, you're thinking, I'm going to melt. The heat of his love is so great. I, I don't even remember what I was going to say to him. So don't make your list. You won't care. Because you are in love with Jesus Christ. He is your bridegroom. Whether you're male or female. Oh my. So the women in the spirit can be spiritual kings. He is king of kings. Female kings. And male kings. Lord of lords, male lords, female lords. We are priests unto our God, male and female. There's only one wedding in heaven. And we'll all be very happy we're going to it. He told me to share this one last thing. A lot of people ask me all kinds of questions about what will your relationship be like. You know what I'm talking about when I'm saying with men and women live together as husband and wife will that all go away well the flesh part absolutely yes but when we have our betrothal with Jesus Christ spirit joins spirit into one and it is the most powerful thing you'll ever experience in your life ever the two shall become one they even say that in a ceremony it says that husband and wife the relation of a husband and wife is a symbolic of Christ and his church or his bride. So we will be able to step inside of each person's, not each person, but we'll be able to step inside Father, Son, Holy Spirit. We step inside the Father. Christ steps inside the Father. Holy Spirit steps inside the Father. And we are all one. And so in that ceremony they have in heaven, they're still preparing the marriage supper of the Lamb because Jesus likes lots of dessert. You can laugh at that because that's true. Jesus loves sweets. He fell in love with them when he was on the earth and it never left him. There are many stunning, amazing things waiting for you to be a part of. This earth is a shadow, a very small shadow of heaven. So yes, you'll still be you. You will know all those who are around you. You're going to look a whole lot better. You will still eat food. It disappears on the inside of you. It's made out of light. You're made out of light. There's no waste in heaven. Yay, hallelujah. No garbage. No trash. It never gets dirty. You won't have to clean anything. Do you think that sounds like heaven? <laughs> Living in the presence of, the, of, of, of our father, his son. An amazing, unlimited supply of angels. That's where you're going. It is a real place. This stays behind. This does. This sleeps. But you, your soul and your spirit, man, never sleep. To be absent from this body is to be present with the... So people who don't believe, they think your soul is going to be sleeping too. I'm like... You would not want to be thrown into a casket while you're alive. Because you're living. You're alive. This garment thing called flesh, that sleeps. When the dead in Christ shall rise, that is your body. Don't ask for a different one. You will like you when you get there. 
and you will like what you look like when that body comes out of wherever it is. And trust me, even if you are burnt to ashes and throw them on the river, he knows where every single one is. It is not wrong to get cremated. That is not what that scripture means. Don't allow yourself to be passed through the fire. That is about the culture of that day when they offered parts of their body on the altar to be burned or their family members. That's, you need sometimes to have that stuff broken. No, it's cheaper, people. Cheaper, 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 cheaper. If you want to start a collection of jars, it'll be fun the day they all open up and everybody comes out. If I am still here, I would love to be in the middle of a huge graveyard. And I will enjoy the show when they burst out of their graves. My grandmother, who gave her whole life to Christ, while her husband was the worst sinner I ever knew, my grandfather, got saved two weeks before he died. She said, you're going to make it. You are making it. I'm going to make sure you make it. She went to the jungles of Panama to be a missionary. She was not afraid of anything, but she made sure. When he died, he was buried 12 feet under. <laughs> so when the dead in Christ shall rise, she shall arise first. <laughs> she prayed him there. Wasn't that wonderful planning? I'm going to make a movie that shows that day. Oh, I'm not going to pass that up. That'll be a fun, you'll be, people will be laughing like this. They can be, yes! Make plans for when you go. You can't take nothing with you. Except everyone else, you get born again. And the souls of people. The most important thing in them is their soul. Amen. So, Father, we pray for the people in this earth that don't know you. We pray that shackles be broken off of them. Their eyes be open. They be set free to know you. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for invading every single sinner on this earth. Put a hunger in them to know God. I thank you, Father, for mass, and I mean mass salvations. He showed me in time when I saw over a million homosexuals run into the kingdom. And if they had something taken off or replaced, the right thing was put back on them when they got saved. There is such demonstrations of the miraculous that have not been seen yet in this earth. And when he sends the last one from himself, he won't need the earth anymore. Even during the time of Christ's millennial reign, people will still be having children, right? There will actually be many people who make it through the tribulation who do not receive Satan and who do not get saved. Who would Christ rule over as king? So people picture the whole earth being void. It's not going to be void. There will be people that aren't even bothered with or messed with, you know. Satan will want to go to the ruling places to control. But he only gets a few years, as the Father calls it, it is a drop in the bucket. And that time is not now. He wants it now, but he's not going to get his way. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to impart the life of God to each and every one of you. It will flow into you. He's already filled me with it. I probably might get very inebriated from it. Because all the flowing all the time of his life going into everybody. And literally, all you do is we make a line. I stand in one spot. You walk up. I lay hands on you, and I just impart. I lay your hand, my hand right here. So it goes into your soul and your spirit, man. And all I say is I impart the life of God. You probably feel it before it gets there. We'll start pouring into you. It's very quick. Say quick. Okay. I'm not prophesying over you, okay? But I will say, when this happens, a lot of healings, especially emotional and mental healings, 
happen when the life of God, you also will get healed physically. A lot of people have, there's such healing because of the life of God. It's his life that is in him now will be in you. So that's what we're going to do. You're going to walk up. I'm going to impart it to you. And then whatever he tells you to do after that, you can do it, okay? But that is the one thing he said he wanted me to give each and every one of you here. Amen. So, Father, thank you for preparing the hearts of the people. Jesus Christ will be here when that happens. He loves to see his Father's life go into every single person. He celebrates. He gets excited. Christ got excited a lot on this earth. He was quite a character. You'll see all the truth when you get to heaven one day. Go to the theater and watch him. He did give his own opinion many times. You are whited sepulchers filled with dead men's bones. That's what he thought about the bad people that day. <laughs> and then he did take time to talk to one person. You know, one person who either had demons need to cast out. Somebody who, I, I love Zacchaeus. I love the story of Zacchaeus. He loved people. And he really loved children. So we will figure out how to do this the fastest way, but that is the fastest way I know to do it. I stand, you make lines, you come by, I release it, and then you're done. Okay.